Hey, I've got a good question for you today on Daily Hope. How should you handle a situation like this? Let's say you know another Christian, another follower of Jesus, and you're comfortable watching a certain movie, but they're not. Or maybe you're comfortable drinking alcohol as long as you don't get drunk, but they're not. What should you do in that situation? Well, we know from the words of Jesus in John 13 and again in John 16 that the greatest prayer he prays for his followers is unity. You might remember that from the Gospel of John. Jesus prayed over and over, Father, may they be one as you and I are one. Uh, and he told us, he said, this is how all people will know you're my disciples, by your love one for another. Well, in the city of Corinth, there were a lot of baby Christians and then as they were growing to become intellectually grown up Christians, there was spiritual pride happening and there was a lot of division happening. So Paul writes this letter led by the Spirit of God to really train and instruct Christians about the importance of unity, unifying around Christ and his word. Now in chapter eight, Paul actually addresses this fairly common issue that when you get 12 or 15 Christians together, there's gonna to be some who have a freedom of they can watch a movie that maybe for another one, the violence or the language or something else, they're like, oh, I could never watch that. Well, how should we handle that? Or many other scenarios, you know, maybe one Christian wants to smoke a cigar and another's like, I could never smoke anything. You know, how, how do we handle that? Well, in chapter eight of 1 Corinthians, Paul essentially uses the modern day issue that they had, which was this meat that was available at the local supermarket, you know, out there in the markets of Corinth, meat that had been offered to pagan idols, demonic idols in sacrifices, was available at discount prices in the market. So some Christians would say, well, those idols are fake. They're just wood or stone. They're not God. So I can eat that meat and it's not a problem. Other Christians would say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I could never eat that meat. It was offered to a pagan idol. Now what was happening is a form of pride, which is a sin. These Christians who had the freedom to eat the meat would eat it and they would brag about it. Or they would even say to the ones who didn't have a piece about it, come on, come over to my house, have a barbecue. I got all this discount, you know, idol meat. And what Paul essentially says is this, if you're the believer who has the freedom to watch the movie or drink the alcohol but not get drunk or smoke the cigar, if you're the Christian who has that freedom, you should never use that freedom in a way that would cause the other Christian to stumble because for them it would be wrong. And you should love them more than you love your movie or your other thing. Those are just some examples, okay? And uh, Paul really summarizes it at the end of his argument in verse 13. Paul pretty much says, hey, I could, I'm fine eating that meat, but I would never do it in the presence of someone who isn't fine, and I would never brag about it, and I would never encourage them to do something that they don't have a piece about. And so in verse 13, he says, so if what I eat causes another believer to sin, then I will never eat meat offered to idols again as long as I live, for I do not want to cause another believer to stumble. The whole point, the whole principle is this, and it's the principle that guides us. Love other believers in your life extremely. Love them extravagantly. And desire for unity with them and their growth, desire that more than you desire your own comfort and rights, which means there may be some days and situations and settings where you sacrifice your rights. You sacrifice things that you have a freedom to do so that you're not a stumbling block to anyone else. God will give you wisdom in how to apply that, but it's an important Christian principle that God uh, put in 1 Corinthians here for us. I'll see you tomorrow for more Daily Hope.